The Air Designer. Included in the By Blood Alone DLC is the Aircraft Designer. To access it, research an airframe here, then go to your Production tab, click Produce Aircraft, and then click the Create Variant button on the airframe you wish to edit. On the left is the Designer, and on the right, the Stats. The process of designing a plane comes down to trying to maximize the stats while minimizing the cost, while also ensuring that the weight of the modules does not surpass the engine's thrust. The core combat stats are air defense, air attack, and agility. Air defense is the hit points of the plane, air attack is how much damage this plane can do to other planes, and agility is how difficult or easy it is for this plane to be hit. The lower the agility, the easier it is to hit, and the higher the agility, the more nimble it is. A plane's class will be determined by its main armament, as well as its airframe. Along the top, you can edit the plane's name, icon, equipment tag, and 3D model. The top row of modules are armaments, and the bottom row are the engine and special module slots. Modules are the base of any design, and can be researched all across the research tree. You can also assign a Mayo to buff the design further. The air designer is definitely the simplest to use, so let's get right into the designs. I'll be using the research all command to unlock all the different unique weapons and special modules. Keep in mind, this also researches all air doctrines, so the stats may be inflated. I received all of these designs from my friend Skrillicon on Discord, who I met through the official Hoi4 server. He's an experienced multiplayer player who is well versed in the meta and whose word I trust on what the meta air designs are. These are the templates that he shared with me. The first designs we're going to look at are the fighter three designs. If you're trying to make the ideal fighters, you don't want to be creating fighters until you have the improved fighter chassis unlocked. Once that is unlocked, the decision ultimately comes down to if your nation has access to a lot of rubber or not. If your nation does not have access to a lot of rubber, you're going to want to put two armor plates and an extra fuel tank on your fighter. This leaves enough weight for two heavy machine gun modules and a light machine gun. If your country does have rubber, then you can put a self-sealing fuel tank as well as two extra fuel tanks here. This will also leave you with enough leftover weight to put three heavy machine guns on your fighter. Next, let's take a look at casts. Similar to building fighters, you're only ever going to want to build casts if you have the improved small airframe unlocked. For the special modules, you're going to want the extra fuel tank to increase the range. For the weapons, heavy bomb locks are actually the most efficient, as in uh, most ground attack per industrial cost. So we're going to put two heavy bomb locks on and a third normal bomb lock. This will maximize ground attack for the cost. Later in the game, you can edit this design by adding the anti-tank cannon 2 weapon module as well as an armor plate to increase the air defense and ground attack of your close air support. The anti-tank cannon has the most ground attack per weight of any of the other close air support weapons. A unique class of plane that is often used in multiplayer is cast specifically designed for naval strike. This is a very cheap plane with a single armor piercing bomb lock that can be spammed out to perform naval strike missions against surface vessels. Later in the game, this design can be upgraded to include two bomb locks as well as a self-sealing fuel tank to further increase air defense. Naval bombers in multiplayer are built off of a medium airframe that is technically designated as a heavy fighter. However, instead of loading the design up with machine guns, you add two torpedoes, as well as some extra fuel tanks for range and defense turrets. Later in the game, that design can be upgraded by adding a self-fueling tank, as well as upgrading the light torpedoes to medium torpedoes, and upgrading the engine for additional agility and range and speed. Carrier naval bombers embrace the spammability even higher, with literally the bare minimum engine and the bare minimum torpedo. Later in the game, they can of course be upgraded, but only slightly because you still want to be able to spam them out. Carrier fighters are naturally a little more substantial, as they actually do need stats to be effective. With a single level 3 engine, two extra fuel tanks, and a self-sealing fuel tank, you'll be able to fit a light machine gun and two heavy machine guns on the small airframe. Heavy fighters can be used alongside long-range casts or strap bombers to ensure air supremacy and the safety of your bombers. The key to a good heavy fighter is the range, so we're going to want some extra fuel tanks and then a lot of heavy machine guns to provide large amounts of air attack. 
Later in the game, we can cram even more heavy machine guns on this fighter, and the improved engine allows us to remove the extra fuel tank while maintaining a reasonable range. For strat bombers, it's sort of unreasonable to invest so much in a plane that is likely to be shot down, so we keep it basic with a basic large airframe. On top of this, we have a cheap engine, self-sealing fuel tanks to increase the air defense a, a little bit, some defense turrets, a bomb site to increase strat bombing, radio navigation to also increase strat bombing, and then just three large bomb bays. Later in the game, the special modules can be upgraded to increase the air defense and the strat bombing further. Upgrading the bomb sites and the radio navigation will increase the strat bombing, while the upgraded engine allows you to add armor plates while maintaining the high range and max speed. Biplanes were a feature that were added in the La Resistance DLC and allow you to collect intelligence by flying them over enemy nations. Their designs ought to be pretty bare bones, while maintaining very high range so that you can spy on far-flung nations. They have no weapons and just a camera. Later in the game, you can upgrade the engine and then substitute the defense turrets for armor plates. Keep in mind that a lot of these designs effectiveness will vary with your military industrial organizations. Do not take these designs as gospel, however most of them are very effective in combat. I think you'll be surprised how much bang you get for your buck, seeing as the designs aren't all loaded with guns and bomb bays. Thanks for watching, and subscribe if you learned something.